is it going everybody? I hope you're having a most wonderful day. Today we're going to be doing a video about um, the questions and answers that I get asked all the time and that is referring to camera equipment and car shows. So we'll be right back to that in just a second. Thanks for sticking around guys. I often get the comments and questions about your videos look good because you have a top-notch camera. Which I do have a top-notch camera. There's better ones out there of course, but right now you're watching me on the Canon 7D with a 24 105L lens. Yes, brand new. It's a $4,000 setup, but I had this when I was doing photography all the time and everything. And um, then I switched over to the GoPro. It's so much smaller and all that stuff. You know, the GoPro 5 is mainly what I film with. And um, a lot of people say it's the, the equipment that I have is the reason my videos look the way they look. Now, I'm no professional by no means. I've got plenty of room to improve on. I try that each video to improve. And um, so today I'm gonna try to pass on a few of those tips with you. You can use any camera you choose, but I'm going to do it with something that everyone has. Well, 98% of everyone has. Cell phone. <laughs> Can you film a car show or car shoot or anything like that with a cell phone? Yes, you can. Chase Jarvis once said, he's a very, very um, top rated photographer out there. He said the best camera that you, the best camera is the one you have with you. That's simple. So let's get to it and I'll show you some of the tips and tricks that I use and maybe they'll help you. Maybe you can pick up something along the way. Alright, here we go. Now still, uh, you're going to be seeing me on the 7D and I have a Rode mic attached to it that a great subscriber sent to me. But this is your typical shot. You know, everybody wants to get this, this level shot. And there's nothing wrong with it if this is the type of look you're going for, but this is not the particular style and look that I go for in my videos. So I'm going to show you what I do. Now again, I'm going to be using the Samsung 7, that's what I have, to take the video. And I'm going to do the videos on the phone. And then we're going to go back inside, put them in the camera, and I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks in there also. But everything that you see referring to the car will be on the 7D. And let me get you off the tripod for just a second, okay? Hold on. Like I say, this is a typical shot that everybody does. Then they'll want to come around here and show the side of the car, right? And that's all fine and dandy. But you need to focus, especially at car shows, because there's so many people, so many cars around and everything. As you can see on top of my car, it's a little dusty. I just pulled it out of the garage over there from the storm. This is literally the day after the hurricane passed through. But if you want to truly get a good quality video, here's how to do it. Alright, first off, when you walk up to the car, you always want to get a kind of angled picture so that people know what kind of car it is, but we'll we'll get that in just a second. But what here's a tip. What you want to do, and I'm going to use my, my camera that I'm recording on now so I can show and talk at the same time. But you want to kind of start off the car and come up to the car. That is drama to the shot, okay? Next step is yeah, you want to see the engine, but most people just walk up, do this, and then they walk off, right? Well, rather than do that, do a panning shot. And like I said, I'll show you on camera. But rather than well, just walk up, get the video like this, you know, add a panning shot to it. Get some of the details, right? Like some of the engine details, say like that um, catch can, the car cover, the strut tower brace, something along that line. Then on top of that, even better, come out and get the emblems. Maybe it's part of the grill, maybe part of the light. Then maybe get a, a wheel shot if it's a unique looking wheel. Get the uh, name of the car on it. 
in this case the windows up so we can't get a, a good interior shot but if the window was down you get a good interior shot then come around and rather than just get a rear end shot get a panning shot and then like I said even a off grip off the car shot up to the rear end then walk over maybe the bow tie maybe the SS emblem you know any of those things maybe the lights if you like the lights the way to look and over the top shot all these things detail shots detail shots detail shots I can't preach that enough even something as simple if I don't fall as the door handle the lock mechanism I mean it could be absolutely anything 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 at all because let's face it like I said when you're at a car show it's hard to get the whole car by itself so what you do is you get the detail shots and then when the car has nobody around it jump out and get the whole car shot first that's why you don't see people in my car videos much yes you see them walking around and all this but very rarely do you see them standing right on top of the car and that's the reason why so let me get back get you back over on the tripod I'm going to do these things with just the camera I mean with just the phone to show you that yes it is very very possible to do this all right I got you back on the tripod I'm going to take my Samsung 7 and get to it we'll be right back inside the house in just a minute Now let's get back inside and put all this together. Okay, here we are in the computer room with the uh, DaVinci Resolve 14 already opened up. This will work with basically any editing software. There may be a few this and that that won't with yours, but you know, basically this will work with any. You're going to go up, click on File, down to Import Media. It brings up your location I always keep my stuff in my pictures folder so anytime I upload anything that's exactly where it goes to this is some old b-roll stuff everything I need is let me see it's gonna be in this one it's gonna be right here at the top okay and you'll see this whenever I put everything together and actually do the video all this down here you'll see then me talking the car shots and everything but for this purpose is only right here what we're going to be doing is the actual camera footage from the phone okay so all i'm going to do is click the first one hold down control and click the last one and it highlights each and every one of them go down to the bottom click ok and it brings them all in and it will also ask you if you want to change the um frame rates and all that just always click yes okay you can see they're all highlighted so that knows that you know that's the ones you just brought in now just click off off of it and it unhighlights them because if you take it and drag it in right now it's going to bring in everything and i actually need to look at this one it's green and find out why it's green 
So let's check it out. And all you got to do, oh, okay, that's why I haven't trimmed it yet. We'll trim that in just a second. And I'm going to try to put most of them in order to the video that you saw outside, but I'm not going to try to do a 100%. I know that this is the first one. This is the upshot, right? Let me put it on just one screen. This is the upshot that you saw. Boom. And we don't want the audio, so I'm going to untick the chain. Left click on the audio and right click it. Now I could just drag. Let me put it back so I can show you. I could just put my cursor over the little um, line right there and that allows you to drag up and down. But I don't want it on there at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Because I'm going to be adding music to this, okay? So there's that one. And then we... Then we got this shot, I believe. Yeah, that was the engine shot. This is what we've got so far. Got that, and then that. And sometimes my phone acts a little glitchy whenever I'm panning, especially. It'll get kind of glitchy and jumpy. So if you see that, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. And then I believe... And hey, let me go ahead and explain this to you. You can see I have one screen open. This is called the inspector panel, okay? Like if I want to do anything to that clip that I just dropped in there, I can click on it and it brings it up over here. I, I could change the composite mode, the transform mode, cropping, dynamic zoom, uh, retime and scaling, lens correction, all kind of stuff, okay? But if you want to be in the screen for actually seeing these video clips, Go up to the top right where it says inspector, click that, and that turns off the inspector panel. All the info is gone. Now you have two screens. So this will be the one that deals with this stuff down here. This one will deal with your video clips. So like if you think that this is the clip that you want to use, you can hover over it and drag across it and it'll show you it. But if you actually want to inspect it, you can drag it in and then hit play. And if that's the one that you want, you can hit clip or, I mean, stop or spacebar, and then just drag it in. Again, I'm going to left click the sound and get rid of it because we don't want the audio. And I noticed right when I got to the end of that, this is why you always double check. Right about here, I was done and I moved the camera. And we don't want that. So what we want to do is let it play and keep our finger on the spacebar. And when it starts to move like that, stop it. Then over on the right hand side of a normal keyboard, you have your numbers. Just to the left of the numbers is four arrows. You got an up, a down, a left, and a right. That will actually control your timeline bar. So if I take and hit the left button, it should start moving the video back. So one frame at a time. So you get it to where it's straight and level right before you brought the camera down or right before I brought the camera down get the razor blade all you do is click on it one time come down to where your timeline marker is and click it and then that will cut the video and here let me move the the timeline things and show you see you now have a cut there all you do is left click it highlights it anything that you're working on will be highlighted in red always once you do that right click and delete selected either that or you can hit the delete button on your computer or backspace either or will work but i like doing this because sometimes whenever you have a long strand if you have to come back and pick one if you hit delete on your keyboard or backspace sometimes it will delete several things in row so if you if it's the last thing in row you have no issues but if it's somewhere along the timeline, I have found that it's actually better to right click it. I mean, click it, then right click and hit delete selected. It just works best for that on my computer. I mean, you might not have any problems, but I have experienced the problem a few times. So with me having that problem a few times, I would like to pass it on to you so that you don't have that problem. Okay. Now that we have a few things in line, let's go to the very beginning and see what we have. And see, I've got them trimmed, like, like you just saw me trim this one. I always double check your work before you get too deep involved. That way, if you have a problem, you can fix it right then and not have any headaches. 
and that looks pretty good but what I want to do is I want to add a blur transition to that beginning so what I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over to the left and I always have my whole toolbox open okay I always have the whole thing open so what I'm gonna do is go down to video transitions and right there blur transitions I'm gonna click it and drag it and put it right at the beginning that way it looks like this let me put it on single screen so you can see it see how it goes from blurred to focus and then I could put other transitions in there if I so choose but that's not what this is about this is about how to shoot you know car video with a cell phone and make it look halfway professional so we've got that one then I think that I did the shot of the catch can so I'm going to delete the audio and then uh, let's see engine shot I got that then I went down and got the grill shot this one I couldn't tell because I was out in the sun it's not in focus as you can see right here it's not in focus the SS but I don't know it kind of adds to the dreamy effect of the video uh, let's see I've got those and then when the end of the video I came back around and got this shot so I'm going to add it I just saw some green so I got to trim that out again audio I'm going to click it then right click delete selected go to the beginning of that clip and it's got green in it for some reason sometimes my phone I guess it's because I've dropped it so many times it'll have green in it whenever it starts recording so what we're going to do is keyframe it. and what I mean by keyframe it is these little numbers right here tenth of a second well they also represent a keyframe a single frame of that video so I've got it at the very beginning so I'm going to right click or go to the right use the right arrow remember the numbers I was the, the numbers I was talking about on the right hand side of your keyboard and the numbers are to the left of it well hit the right arrow left will make it go back right left will make it go back right will make it go to the right so pretty self-explanatory we want to get the very first green one which is right there okay that's the beginning of the clip we're at just disregard the first numbers we're at 04 and I only clicked at one so we're at 05 now so that's pretty simple get the razor blade again left click it go over to the timeline click it and it cuts it and then always go back and reselect your pointer because I have learned that accidents happen trust me hours into a video accidents happen we don't want accidents I mean you can recover from them easily but we don't want accidents now look that is so small it's really hard to delete that so all you have to do is left click the video clip and drag it over until that line is gone see now that line's gone it should not be there now let's see see the green's gone and that's exactly what we want okay we've got that now let's get us another clip let's see we've got that um, then I went down the side of the car got the, the name so we'll drag that in I'm gonna left click the audio right click it delete selected okay then I went to the back of the car I got this shot Again, get rid of the audio and then you don't have to check the whole thing like we've done checked half of this so we know it's good so let's go to where the green was and play and see what we've got make sure there's no sudden jumps in the camera or anything like that like you know we almost dropped it or whatever then I got the bow tie shot right and I'm not gonna say and tell you each time we're deleting the audio I've done it enough times to where I'm just gonna go ahead and do it you know how to do it now I'm just gonna go ahead and do it without telling you each and every time so we got the bow tie shot then we got the SS shot then we got um, let's see I thought I had a door handle shot in here. then we came out and got the wheel shot no I didn't get the door handle shot sorry guys and then we have this other V8 shot that I got right at the end okay now well, here's a, a little thing I want to show you I, ju I just put them in order according to the way that I took them outside okay but I don't like this right here I'm at the back of the car got the wheels then I jump back up to the engine 
right? I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click and hold that engine scene and raise it up, okay? Then just click off, off of it to the right, to the left, anywhere, just unselect it so it's not red. So what I'm going to do is I want to go back to an appropriate spot, right? Let's just go back to the beginning. I'm going to click the timeline, we're going to watch the whole thing, and I'm looking for an appropriate spot to put that. All right, there's the engine bay. I could put it there. I could put it there. Mm. And there's the catch can. I think I want to put it before the catch can. I could put it before or after. But because we just had three, two or three sections of the engine, I think it would go good right there. So here's a way to move it. I mean, there's easier ways. This is just the way I do it so I know I don't screw up. Click and highlight one. And then since I'm going all the way to the end, I'm going to hit uh, shift and click the last one. That highlights all of them. Then you can click on any one and hold it. Click and hold. And they will all stay highlighted. And then you can drag. Okay, I want to move it off far enough because I'm going to bring back this clip. That's the engine cover. Click and highlight that one. And then that makes these unhighlighted. Click and drag it. Drop it to the beginning, right? There's that. And then to get rid of, you could put them back the same exact way you just moved them. Or watch this. Click in there. That highlights the dead spot. Remember, anything you're working on will be highlighted. And then hit backspace. And, that, and as long as you have that mirror, I mean that magnet turned on, they will go back to the same exact spot. Now let's watch the whole thing. Beginning to end. Okay, there's a blur transition. Engine, engine. This is when I had the phone up at the hood, looking down. Then I pointed at the camera toward the end and to let you know that's what I was gonna get. That's the catch can. And rather than just doing a pan shot, I did kind of a revolve shot where I went around it. The engine cover. And I just thought about something. We got a couple of this out of order that, I, that, you know, this is why you check stuff, okay? Right here, you got the SSM, so we're outside the car. Then we jump back to the inside of the car. I don't like that. So I want to swap it. So I want to click and hold that one, pull it up. Click and hold this one, pull it over, right? I want all the engine stuff to be together. So that, I want to pull that one over. Then I'll go back, click and highlight it, and drag it back down in there. Now all the engine bay stuff will be together. I won't be jumping around the car, you know. Then we'll go to the front of the car, down the back of the car, and then we'll be done. Then we'll get the wheel. Now that looks pretty good. I like that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the order. Here is another step to make your video really, really pop, okay? You want to change the aspect, aspect ratio because this will come out full screen. If you're looking for full screen, it's great, you know, no problem with that. No problem at all. But if you want something a little more cinematic, if you will, if you want something a little more slick, more polished looking, you need to change that. And the way you change that is you go up to, let's see, uh i gotta find it i keep forgetting where it's at i think it's in timeline uh output blanking you want to go in timeline and go down to output blanking and that's the way that the video will come out in vi in production 1.3 1.85 2.39 9. just play with them and see which one you like this is 1.85 boom it puts just a little bit of a bar at the bottom well, like I said, we're going for more cinematic, so that's not going to do. Let's go to 2.35. There we go. Look at that. Look at how that looks. Now, just to make sure that everything's going to look good at that sizing, let's go back to the beginning. Hit play. Now you're going to lose a little detail at the top and the bottom. 
that's why it's always important to have what you it's not like photography photography you don't always want your subject in the direct middle but when you do video make certain that everything that you want in the video is in the middle that way if you change the output blanking or you change the uh, you put bars on it manually however you do it that's how it looks now let's pick some music out for this all right so i'm gonna go up i have two places where i have my music the newest ones i've used is in downloads the old ones are in my music folder whichever one you have is the one you'll use but what i like to do is if i'm uncertain of what i want to use i'll come in i'll just double click and then that'll bring it up and then it lets it play and then i can go to the next one just by clicking on the arrow on the right find the one that i like And then if you don't want to wait on it, you can click anywhere in there, you know. But this is just a way to find the music. Not want. No. no, I don't want to use any of those. Wrong moves. That one's okay. Yeah. But this is just ways to find, go through your music real quick. back Come over, I, see you uh, I don't know I can't really use the beginning of that because it's too long till he starts singing the singing will come in right at the end of the video and I don't want that so I could trim off the the front but let's see what the actual audio sounds like I don't think that'll work it's good but I don't think it's quite what I want no 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 That's a possibility. Of course we can. Into the match. What you I think we'll go back to that Infentium. And just use it so since I didn't come in through the regular way I'm just gonna click it and drag it ah, click and drag it and drop it down on DaVinci copy and since I just downloaded the whole thing it comes with the video part too so I got to separate them so drag it and drop it in my timeline click on the top because we have it on un unchanged so we can top click on the top or bottom individually right I'm gonna click on the top right click delete and since we're going all the way to the beginning we can do this but we can't do it right here we've got to move it down to a separate track because it has those well actually we could but I'm gonna do it this way if we had left those soundtracks on the bottom you would not be able to do this you'd have to physically drag it and drop it over them but since there's no soundtrack just click in the dead space backspace now the audio has moved they watch now let's match the audio to the video go to the beginning see if this works Okay. 
and then hit the space bar and it stops. Space bar is start and stop by the way. So now we need to trim it to match the uh, I'm trying to think uh, the end of the video. So we're gonna go back up, click the razor, come back over, and right underneath it, boom, click it. Get our pointer because, like I said, I've had bad accidents before with leaving that. Right click the excess, delete selected. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know by now I hate for the music to just stop like this. And see, it just stops. I hate that. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And if you wonder how I move that timeline so quickly, there's two ways to do it. The four arrows that I talked about earlier, up, down, left, right. Well, if you click on up, it will move it. Each video clip, each time you press it, it will move it. Down will take it to the other direction. Or you can take your cursor, your pointer, and click anywhere in the timeline. Depends on what you're wanting to do. If you're just wanting to move somewhere real quick, cursor's better. If you know that you want to move back to the exact beginning or the end of, of the video clip, up and down works quicker. Depends on what you're wanting to do. But since these two are short clips, what I'm going to do is create a fade. You have fades and all that stuff over in your toolbox, but this one is so much easier, so much faster, and you can put it exactly where you want it, okay? It, when I, whenever you hover over a video clip, right, white dot, white dot, that gives you a little fade option. You can take the fade in, see, watch this one. And if you don't like it going all the way, you can put it halfway and have it fade back out. Put the two together. Now watch. It all depends on what look you're going for, okay? But for video, for this video only, I'm going to do the audio. Audio the same way. See, there's the little pointer. Click it and drag it however far you want it to start coming in. But I know I want it to start right about where the two last video clips are. So watch. See how easily that went? Now all you got to do is save your project, okay? I like to click off the screen, hold it, and drag. You can make this box as big and as small as you want. I like doing it that way because that way it gives me total control to know that everything in that video is highlighted. Go down to deliver, down at the bottom, down here, down at the bottom, deliver, right here. Click that. It takes you into your rendering panel. Again, I'm going to click off screen and you always want to start above or below what you have. I don't have anything below the audio, so I'm going to start above it. That gives me the option to drag down and across and catch everything, okay? See how that works? Now it's all highlighted because that's just the way I want. I don't want anything mixed, missed. Go up to the top left. You'll have custom where you can tell it exactly what you want, how you want it, and everything else, like ordering at Wendy's. YouTube presets, Vimeo presets, Final Cut Pro, Premiere XML. I don't have Premiere and I don't have Final Cut. What I normally use for YouTube, I just go up and click the little down arrow. You can save it 720p, 1080p, 2160. I normally save it 1080 because that's how it's recorded. I save it as that and then I tell it to add to render queue. I don't mess with any of this unless I want to save it somewhere different or some kind of other format. I click add to render. I always put it in my video file because that's what this is, it's a video. And I click OK. Now let me check something before we go any further. I think that I actually have another video in here. Yep, right there, the hurricane video that I just released. So I want to get rid of that because the problem is we did not rename this, um, this video before I started it. And then after I started, I realized, oh God, I got a video in there already with the same exact name, same to the save to the same exact space. It won't cause a problem. It'll just ask if you want to render over that. But I don't want to render over that because I don't want any issues. I haven't hit any yet. I don't want any. So 
make sure that's gone or you're saving it somewhere else. It gives you the job title, tells you the name of it. We didn't name it, it's just named Timeline 1. And when we click Start Render, there will be a bar that goes across here, slowly showing your progress and how much time you have left. There will be another one that comes up that tells you how much time you have left and all that. So let's click Start Render, and when we do, you'll see this timeline marker jump all the way back over to the left, and then it'll start. And you can follow it if you want, or you can go do something else. But here we go, Start Render. See it jump back over? It's rendering it, and it's, you can also watch it as you do it. And because it's short clips, it's going to go pretty fast. And then we'll talk about something in just a second when it gets done. I got to get out there and wax that thing because I, I noticed that there's like one or two uh, swirl marks and there's a bunch of halos on it. So I got to get out there and, and polish and wax this thing. Okay. Now before you close this program out, leave it as is. Always, always, always go double check your work. Like I said, I saved this to my video folder. So I'm going to go down to where my, all my folders are, right there. Click that. It brings them all up up here. There's my video folder. I'm going to double click that. And there it is. Now let's watch it. Just to make sure that everything is the way we want. Double click it. There you go. Now, in this particular instance, I did not show you how to do the text and all that stuff because it wasn't necessary. We're talking about how to do this that you have before you, how to use your phone to make a car show video or a B-roll video for your car or however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. That's what this was for. So I just showed you from start to finish how to make a car show video. Then all you got to do is add your opening, your intro, as you will, and your outro. That's, that's the only two things you got left to do. So, with that said, I hope you have picked up a thing or two from this. And I hope that you use them because we all need to try, strive to be better. And that's what this is. That's what my editing and uh, program videos are about. Trying to help you become better and if you have any tips on how i can become better by all means let me know i am more than willing to learn because i have the philosophy of when you are happy with where you are that means you feel you don't need to learn or better yourself and we always always as human beings need to try to better ourselves whether it be our how we talk how how we communicate with one another especially these days how we treat one another you know we always need to strive to be better so we always need to continue to learn never ever ever be happy with where you are and with all that gobbledy gook said that you probably don't care about thank you sorry i'm all dirty everybody and sweaty for this video but i've been outside like i said this is the first day after hurricane florence and i've been out uh cutting tree limbs up and picking up sticks and stuff so i'm all dirty got uh my nasty 2SS shirt, they're all dirty, I'm sweaty, I need a good shower. But with all that said, there you go. There's no reason that you cannot make a deal. What, Cooper? What? There's no reason that you cannot make a good looking video just because all you have is a phone. Chase Jarvis said it 100% correct. The best camera is the one that you have with you. doesn't matter what it is. From a $25,000 camera down to a $300 phone. And I've seen people use this even cheaper equipment. I mean, come on, you can get a $40 or $50 um, GoPro wannabe off of Amazon or even eBay. But you can get a GoPro wannabe and, and do the same thing. It, it's about what 
what you do with what you have. I've seen you, I've showed you a few tips of how I film cars, how I do car videos. I'm still trying to get better myself. There's a few tricks that I've recently found that I'm going to be trying and everything. And I'm going to be giving those a try. And I hope that you notice them in some of the next, the, new, the following videos that I do. Will they work? Will they not? I don't know. But we're going to give them a try. Like I said, the whole reason I do this series, and it's not really a series, but it's a bunch of videos about the same thing. You know, DaVinci Resolve. Now you have how to uh, video with the phone. Then I'm going to show you how to, next one I'm going to show you is along the same lines, but I'm going to be using a regular camera. But I'm going to answer the question of, I'm going to show you the, the, the answer to the question. I've already answered it. How do I get car shots without people in them? And I'll, I'll be showing you that, okay? So stay tuned for that one. I have more videos coming up. I still have the Camaro by the numbers timeline coming on. I think I'm going to hold off till winter time to do those because it's more inside stuff. And I'm getting all the video footage and everything I can now during the summertime and the fall. Uh, the car shows are fixing to start winding down, so I'm trying to get all the uh, video and audio I can for, the, for that series. So expect that coming up. And just more car shows until the end. I've got some how-to stuff coming up. i still got tires and wheels for my fourth gen. And so on and so forth. But that's not what this video is about. But that's just to let you know I do have future stuff coming. So with all that said... <laughs> You guys get out there and enjoy your car. That's what it's about. It doesn't matter if you're just out there making a quick little video about it with your phone like I just did my red car. If you're going to a car show, if you're going to a race, if you're just driving to the freaking store to get you uh, uh, your favorite drink, whether it be an energy drink or whatever. Enjoy it. That's what it's for. And until next time, I'm going to get back out here and pick up some more sticks. You guys wish me luck. Thank you so much for stopping by and we'll see you next time.